Hi, and welcome back to Hill and Ponton's VA Disability Blog. I'm Natalia Joffrey, the company COO. And I'm attorney Rachel Cheek. And we're going to be talking today about orthopedic injuries. So your VA claim and orthopedic injuries. Um, Rachel, uh, some veterans want to know, how do I qualify for disability benefits for orthopedic conditions? Okay, so just the standard... Um, formula basically for getting service connected is you need um, a current diagnosis, you need mm -hmm. an in-service injury or incident or, or incurrence, basically showing that something happened in service to cause this condition and mm -hmm. you need a nexus which links the current condition and the in-service incident. Okay. Um, what if they already had, and we see this all the time, mm -hmm. what if they had orthopedic conditions before service? Can they still get benefits? Yes, you can. Um, okay. Now, this is a little more difficult. Um, this deals with, um, we call it aggravation. So this is something, it's obviously much easier if you go into service perfectly healthy and then you come out and you've got, you know, a, a back condition. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, there's it has clearly occurred in service whereas if you went into service with a back condition you come out it's even worse then you have to show that um being in the service something in the service either happened to to aggravate that condition or escalate its progression um beyond its you know what it normally would be even if it's a condition that would have gotten worse eventually if you can show that okay well it got worse because i was you know lifting guys over my head <laughs> or you know right, right, carrying, right. you know 50 pound bags of gear um then in that case you can get service connection as well okay um what does the VA look at when it comes to orthopedic conditions um so you know can you give us some examples of I guess some demology or anything else that they that they consider Sure. So it depends on the, so orthopedic conditions is, is a pretty wide umbrella. So that's yeah. anything that deals with the uh, musculoskeletal system. Um, I'll probably mostly talk about the, the, like the bones, the joints, because that's what we do see more, but we do of course see um, muscle injuries, muscle strain, that kind of thing as well. So it depends on the condition. Um, a big one, huge one for orthopedic conditions is range of motion. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's something where if you have, say, a neck condition or, or a back condition and you're not able to, to move as, you know, with a full range of motion, um, the VA will look at how far you can bend, how far you can, you know, rotate certain parts of your body, whatever is affected. And um, the rating criteria for those types of conditions are, um, are based on basically range of motion. Mm -hmm. um, for other conditions, there are um, they may measure for muscle conditions, for example, um, they may measure atrophy, basically mm -hmm. showing that you know you, you don't have use of, of this certain muscle, and so much so that it, it actually has atrophied. It, it appears to be weaker and um, not not as full as like a healthy muscle would look. Um, you would also see things like. Um, pain. I know that we've talked before about um, arthritis, which would also be mm -hmm. considered an orthopedic condition. And we talked about the 10% rule, which essentially if you have painful movement of a joint, um, but even if you don't have limitation of motion, if you say you have pain and you know you, you do, and that's something that n nobody can contest that, that if that's happening, um, you can be rated for 10% based upon just that painful motion. Because of course, even maybe if you have the full range of motion, technically you can do this. Um, mm -hmm. That impacts your ability to, to do daily tasks. If, if every time you move past a certain amount, um, you have pain, that is disabling mm -hmm. to an extent. Right. Okay. Um, what are common body parts affected by orthopedic injuries? So, you know, what would you say is a common injury for, for someone? Um, I would say a lot of times I see knee conditions. So um, either degenerative arthritis of the knees or patellofemoral syndrome. Um, that sounds fa fancy. What is right? that? <laughs> that's a great question. Um, <laughs> essentially something, it, it, um, it affects the way that your, um, your kneecaps basically move and, and can, um, can cause pain, can cause limitation of motion. Um, also, let's see, for back, I see a lot of um, degenerative disc disease. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm trying to go through like muscles in, in my head here. Um, yeah. Sometimes even things like um, 
like shin splints I've seen a lot um you, you uh -huh. think with the amount of activity um and physical training that you've got to go through um you know especially during you know your, your younger more active years um in the military a, a lot of people can can get shin splints from that and you can be service connected for that um mm -hmm. are you, amputations considered mm -hmm. um orthopedic okay yes thankfully I don't those aren't I, I don't want to say those aren't common I, I don't come across those a lot I mean those are very serious but yes that is that is considered a uh, orthopedic condition and um, once you run into to, to amputation you can start to look at um, at special monthly compensation which I know we've mm -hmm. done a few videos about me and you yes <laughs> um, basically um, anything that affects the the loss of use of one of your limbs or you mm -hmm. know feet or hands that's something that um, will be considered by the VA to to be even above and beyond um, you know normal service connected disability mm -hmm. uh, let's see what about fractures like we always I hear a lot about people having fractures and then they they don't heal properly mm -hmm. or they develop arthritis over time can something like that even be service connected absolutely well I was just mentioning mm -hmm. about about shin splints that's technically kind of a fracture oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. or yes any kind of I mean it doesn't have to be in your shin it can be anywhere you, that you have a fracture that doesn't heal properly and you you continue to have problems with it down the line um, mm -hmm. especially you can show that that was incurred during service and mm -hmm. um, you can have that nexus showing that you know you your current condition now um, stems from that event in service mm -hmm. that's yeah. something to be service connected as well okay what about secondary connection uh, any can you get any secondary connection for orthopedic injuries Absolutely. I'll give you a couple of common ones. Okay. Um, so first is is depression. I see this all mm -hmm. the time with with orthopedic injuries. Um, you got to think about it. If say you know you you've got a back condition or or a leg condition, something that that you're not able to get around, you're not able to maybe be as active as you once were. You you have difficulty you know doing daily tasks. Um, mm -hmm. That obviously would would maybe lead you to be a little depressed and think about the things that you, you can no longer do or, or just the limitations that it causes. You can't be as active. You can't be um, as, as participatory in, in your own life as you might like to. That can lead to depression. And I have seen that service connected um, secondary to an orthopedic injury. Um, now, another one I can think of is, so again, orthopedic is muscles and bones. So mm -hmm. something I see a lot um, would be um, a, a veteran who maybe got in a car accident during service and got um, cervical strain, whiplash, yeah. mm -hmm. um, from that car accident, causing neck pain and, and, and issues with your neck. Well, a lot of times, well, I don't know, a lot of times, sometimes if you, you've got that neck strain injury, that can lead to um, headaches. So it, it can it can start you know towards the back of your neck and, and and slowly kind of take over. Yes. And that's something that I mean headaches in and of themselves can be absolutely debilitating if that's all you have. Um, but if you have that on top of other conditions, you know that that's really something that you need to call to the attention of the VA and um, make sure to get that checked out because those can be secondarily service connected as well. It's interesting that you say that because I know that lots of times people don't realize after an accident that these conditions that they're having are related to that accident. Mm -hmm. And like we've discussed before, you know, in, in while in service, it doesn't have to be, well, I was climbing a ladder, you know, and then I fell while I was working and injured myself. It could have been an accident that you were having, you know, driving home from base or whatever. And right. That, yeah. sorry, it just, it, I, I saw a, I saw the, the <laughs> moment of yes <laughs> uh, yes I um, we have um, we have a case in which um, a, a veteran was he was injured he was during his active duty service um, and it, it was during football playing you know playing football game um, it was during his active duty service it doesn't matter um, you know w what exactly he was doing as long as it wasn't uh, willful misconduct and nothing illegal nothing against the rules <laughs> she's an attorney folks she always likes to give the disclaimer <laughs> Have to, it's have true, to let you know. True. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, as long as it happened, you know, dur during that period of service, um, and you can show that. Yeah, yeah, no yeah, that's great. Can you get a hundred percent VA disability um, due to orthopedic injuries? Um, and I guess along those same lines, TDIU. I know that I learned earlier today that you can only get ten percent max for tinnitus. Mm -hmm. um, but so is there any kind of cap like that for orthopedic injuries? Um, 
what can you tell us about those ratings? So it depends on the injury, um, the, the rating schedule. Some conditions only go up to a certain um, percentage. Mm -hmm. So for example, I mean, I was just talking about headaches. It's not orthopedic, but I mean, I, I can tell you that that only goes up to 50%. That's the max you can get. Okay. Um, so there, there's other conditions. Obviously, I mean, think about it. You have, um, you have a, a, a thumb condition, say. You, you can be rated for that, but you're not that that uh, disability um, compensation. That's not going to go as high as if you have, say, a neck injury or a back injury. Um, but yes, so you can get up to 100% um, with orthopedic injuries because you. I mean, a lot of times we were using car examples, as, uh, car accidents as an example. Mm -hmm. um, if you have incurred an injury, you're in an accident, or you were in. Um, yeah, an accident or you had something happen during service where um, it's common for more than one joint or body part to be affected in that. So mm -hmm. say you're in, in a car accident, your back is injured, your neck is injured, maybe you've got the post-traumatic headaches afterwards. Um, depending on the severity of your conditions, um, those ratings can add up to 100%. Mm -hmm. And even if they don't, TDIU is absolutely something that you can get for orthopedic conditions as long as you meet the criteria, um, which is that you need to have a rating of either a single condition at, a, at at least 70% or if you have a combined rate, I'm sorry, if you have a combined rating of at least 70% or a single condition of at least 60% uh, okay, and aren't able to work, mm -hmm. then TDIU um, may be an option for you. Okay, great. So that's that's a lot of good news there in terms of what you could potentially qualify for. Absolutely. Okay, great. Well, this was super helpful. Thank you, Rachel. You're very welcome. Thanks for joining us. If you have any questions, please feel free to visit our website or call our office. Otherwise, we hope you'll you'll join us again in the future.